In this lecture, we'll talk about the graph of a function. To begin with, we want to be able to look at a graph and determine whether or not it represents a function. And there's a fairly easy way to do that. It's called the vertical line test. So a set of points in the xy plane will be the graph of a function if and only if every vertical line intersects the graph in at most one point. So if you can draw a vertical line that intersects your graph in more than one point, it is not a function. So let's look at a couple of examples. First, we want to determine if this is the graph of a function. So to check and see if this graph is a function, we'll employ the vertical line test. We're going to watch the vertical line go across the graph, and as long as it only intersects at one point, this will be a function. So as the vertical line passes through, we see that every time that it intersects the graph, it's only at one point. So this graph passes the vertical line test. That means that it is the graph of a function. What about the graph of this circle? Does this represent the graph of a function? Again, we'll employ the vertical line test. And as the vertical line moves through the graph, we see that it intersects the graph in two points. So this graph fails the vertical line test. That means it is not a function. Take a look at this graph and see if you can determine whether or not it's a function. We employ the vertical line test, and we see that the vertical line intersects the graph in two points at most places, so it fails the vertical line test, and this is not a function. Here's one last example. Try and see if you can figure whether or not this is a function. Again, we use the vertical line test, and since the vertical line intersects the graph at most once in each point, this passes the vertical line test, and so it is the graph of a function. Now let's talk about obtaining information from the graph of a function. Using this graph, we want to answer the following questions. First, we want to find the value of f of 0. Since our x value is 0, we want to find out what is the function value when x is equal to 0. If we look at the graph, when x is equal to 0, y is also equal to 0, so we have the point 0, 0. This means f of 0 equals 0. Next, we want to answer, is f of 3 positive or negative? So when x is equal to 3, does the graph of the function go above or below the x-axis? So when we're looking at x equals 3, the graph of the function is below the x-axis. That means f of 3 is negative. Next, we want to find the x-intercepts of the function f. So these are the places where the graph crosses the x-axis. And those would be 0, 0, 4, 0, and 6, 0. Next, we want to find the domain of the function f. Remember, the domain represents all of the possible x values. And so since our graph starts at x equals negative 4 and goes continuously until x equals 6, our domain will be from negative 4 to 6. And since we have solid dots at negative 4, 4, and 6, 0, that means negative 4 and 6 are included. So we use square brackets to denote the domain. Next, we want to find the range of the function f. So the range has to do with the possible y values. So the smallest y value present on our graph comes at the point 2, negative 2. So the smallest y value is negative 2. And the largest y value on the graph comes at the point negative 4, 4. So our high y value is 4. So our range will go from negative 2 to 4 with those points included. So we use square brackets. Finally, how many times does the line y equals negative 1 intersect the function? So to figure this out, we can sketch the graph of the horizontal line y equals negative 1 and then count the points of intersection. So it looks like the line y equals negative 1 intersects the function twice. And finally, we want to be able to obtain information about the graph of a function given its equation. So given the function f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 5x, we want to answer the following questions. First, is the point negative 1, 2 on the graph of f? So we start with our function f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 5x. And remember, if the point negative 1, 2 is on the graph, then when I plug in negative 1 for x and 2 for f of x, we should get a true statement. 
So let's plug in negative 1 for x and 2 for f of x. This gives us 2 equals negative 3 times negative 1 squared plus 5 times negative 1. If we simplify the exponents and the multiplication, we get 2 equals negative 3 minus 5. And so we wind up with 2 equals negative 8. This is of course not true. So the point negative 1, 2 is not on the graph of the function f. Next, if x is equal to negative 2, find the value of f of x. Again, we start with our function f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 5x. And if we want to find the value of f of x when x is equal to negative 2, we'll plug in negative 2 for x. So f of negative 2 equals negative 3 times negative 2 squared plus 5 times negative 2, which we can simplify. f of negative 2 equals negative 3 times 4 minus 10. Simplifying further, we get f of negative 2 equals negative 12 minus 10. And so f of negative 2 equals negative 22. Continuing our example, we have a few more things that we want to answer regarding the function f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 5x. So our next question is, if f of x equals negative 2, what is x? We again start with our function f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 5x. And if we want to find out what value of x makes f of x negative 2, we'll plug negative 2 in for f of x. So negative 2 equals negative 3x squared plus 5x. Now we want to solve for x. We add 2 to both sides of the equation, giving us 0 equals negative 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. So we have a quadratic equation that we want to solve. The method for solving this type of equation is to multiply the first and last coefficients together. So negative 3 times 2 gives us negative 6. And then find two factors of this value that add to give us the middle term. So two factors of negative 6 that add to give us 5 would be a positive 6 and a negative 1. So we rewrite the middle term using those two factors. So our problem becomes 0 equals negative 3x squared plus 6x minus x plus 2. We can continue to solve by using factor by grouping. So we group our first two terms together and group the last two terms together. We factor a negative 3x from the first group, giving us negative 3x times x minus 2. And factor a minus 1 from the second group, giving us negative 1 times x minus 2. Now since we have an x minus 2 in both groups, we can factor that out giving us negative 3x minus 1 times x minus 2 equals 0. If we set each factor equal to 0 and solve, we'll get x equals negative 1 third and x equals 2. For our next question, we want to determine what is the domain of f of x. Remember, to find the domain of a function, we want to make sure that we exclude anything that makes the denominator of the fraction 0, or we want to make sure that whatever is underneath an even radical is positive. But since we don't have a fraction here, there is no denominator, and there is no even radical, so we don't have to worry about either of those. So the domain will just be all real numbers. So the interval from negative infinity to infinity. Continuing the previous example, we still want to answer the following about the function f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 5x. Next, we have what are the x-intercepts. So we start with our function f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 5x. And remember, if we're looking for x-intercepts, we set the opposite variable, y, or f of x equal to 0. So setting f of x equal to 0, we get 0 equals negative 3x squared plus 5x. We can factor an x out of both terms, giving us x times negative 3x plus 5. And using the zero product property, that means either x equals zero or negative 3x plus 5 equals zero, so we can solve both of these equations. So if x equals zero, then we just have x equals zero. If negative 3x plus 5 equals zero, we need to solve for x. So we subtract 5 from both sides of the equation, giving us negative 5 equals negative 3x. Divide both sides of the equation by negative 3, and we get x equals 5 thirds. So the x-intercepts for our function are 0, 0, and 5 thirds, comma, 0 as well. Finally, we want to find out what is the y-intercept of our function. Again, we start with the function f of x equals negative 3x squared plus 5x. And if we're looking for the y-intercept, that means x will equal 0, so let's plug 0 in for x. 
This gives us f of 0 equals negative 3 times 0 squared plus 5 times 0, which if we simplify means that f of 0 equals 0, and so the y-intercept is the point zero, 0.